Yowzers, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Senior Repeater 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 for otherwise known as Kyle Car Car Dinosaurus, and I'm here today to do a top 15 British dinosaurs because I thought to myself, hey, Brit dinosaurs don't gain enough don't gain enough credit as they should do. Let's just give them all the credit that they need. So yeah, let's dive straight into it with number 15. So number 15, we got uh, I can never pronounce this one. Sarcolestes, which means f flesh thief, and this is a weird looking, uh, weird looking dinosaur. I believe it's about three meters in length. Um, it was discovered quite a few years ago. Um, I'm not totally sure on how. Uh, I think it was in the 80. It was in 19. I mean, not 19. 1893. So yeah, it was. It was quite a considerable amount. Uh, well, quite a considerable few years ago, but. Um, yeah, but this this has a cool name. I like it's a cool English name, but um, it's not really that significant as a dinosaur. But it is still a cool dinosaur in my opinion. So yeah, that takes the number fifteen spot. Coming in at number fourteen is Dacentrus, which is a ten meter long uh, Stegosaurian from Britain, and this guy just looks really cool. I, I kind of like how he, he looks like a combination between um, <coughs> a Miragaya and a Kentrosaurus and a, and a bit of a Stegosaurus in there. But uh, yeah, he was a 10 meter long Stegosaurian from Britain, and uh, he was discovered in 1875 by Owen. And I just love, I love the name of this one as well. He's he called many, I think he's called many pointed lizard. And uh, I just love, the, I just love the look on him. He looks very, he looks very sauropod like as well because he's partly Ornithischian. Uh, group as well that makes him closely related to sauropods, but not too closely related. But this guy, yeah, he's a cool dinosaur. I like him. Um, but again, he's not he's not up there with the, with the other guys. He can't contend with the rest of him. So yeah, this is why he's stuck down here at number fourteen. Up at number thirteen, the unlucky thirteen is Lex V. Le uh, can't say it now. <laughs> Lexavisaurus. Which was a, which is another Stegosaurian, and he's he's quite a cool he's quite a cool Stegosaurian as well. I mean, I like the look on him as well. Um, I like it. I like um, I like the Stegosaurian just because he's that average size. Uh, he's that average average size Stegosaurian you want, about five meters long, not too big, not too small. Um, he was first discovered in 1957, so he was quite he was quite late into the uh, 20th century. But um, look at him. I mean, he looks he looks quite cool. I mean, he does look quite a bit like Stegosaurus. I mean, I think there might be just a debate going on. I think I heard about this a few years ago. There's a I think there might be a debate going on whether he's actually a, ge a species of the Stegosaurus genus. But I believe this guy is a genus on his own, and he makes a great addition to the to the British dinosaurs. I mean, not only does it show that Britain has a diverse um, genera of dinosaurs, but it also has a diverse genera of Stegosaurians, and that is quite cool. On to the next one. Up at number twelve is Polacanthus, and we all know this guy from Walking with Dinosaurs, and um, he's quite a he's quite a small dinosaur. I think he's around six meters long. Um, I think I don't know. I'm not too sh I th if I can remember off the top of my head. Um, I think his m I think his minimum is four meters, and his maximum is six meters. Um, he was discovered in 1881 uh, in the Isle of Wight. So uh, yeah, he's quite a cool looking dinosaur. Um, I believe there are there are two species that live in Britain. There is Polacanthus foxy and Polacanthus rugged uh, rugged wickiensis, I think. But uh, yeah, just, I, I, I've always found him as quite a look a cool looking um, Gastonian type of ankylosaurid. And you know something, um, a Gastonian kind of dinosaur to Britain is a great addition. I mean, this this guy he looks he looks well armor plated. I mean, he could do some real damage with those spines. And this particular picture here, I thought was quite tranquil, quite peaceful with him just uh, browsing on some trees or something. But yeah, Polycanthus is a cool, 
cool looking dinosaur. Do not underestimate him if you were to ever come across him. But yeah, on to the next one. Up at number 11 is Regnosaurus. I'm sorry for the quality of this picture, but this is probably one of the best pictures I could get of this dinosaur. Again, another Stegosaurian. And as you can see, uh, we, followed, we followed a bit of pattern with the Stegosaurians. That's because Britain was quite full of Stegosaurians. I mean, you'd got the previous ones, and you got the Ankylosaurids, and you got Sauropods. So Britain was full of different genuses of different dinosaurs of different families and different subfamilies, as well as the carnivores. We'll get into some carnivores in, as we move up the list. But um, this guy, he was probably one of the coolest out of the Stegosaurians, just because um, he was a, pretty much a perfect Stegosaurian. I mean, not only was he a, a small Stegosaurian, he was about four meters long, but his, uh, his name sounded cool. Um, he was found probably in, eight, I think it was 1848, I believe. But yeah, this guy is, is a cool looking dinosaur, he's a cool looking Stegosaurian. To be honest, I would love to ride this guy into battle <laughs> because he's like he's just basically a, he's a, he's um like almost a horse-sized Stegosaurus. I mean, you'd love that, wouldn't you? But yeah, this is why uh, he's on at number eleven, and let's get into the top ten. And we're just breaching number ten, and at number ten we have Eo Tyrannus, the Dawn Tyrant, and this guy was uh, I think he was discovered quite recently, if I believe, if I'm correct. Um, I'll just have a check here. I believe he was in the nineteen. Ooh, 19 something. Oh, hang on, no, it wasn't. It was um, back in 2001 he was discovered. He's 4.5 meters long and lived in the Isle of Wight. And uh, he lived in the early Cretaceous period, and that's when Tyrannosaurians were starting to really take off. I mean, I mean, well, they were starting to emerge. And then in the middle of the Cretaceous period, they began to take off a bit. And then finally, into the late Cretaceous, they took off. They became the dominant predators on the planet. Um, but this guy, he'd make a cute, he'd make a really cute pet. I mean, just having him like as a guard dog or something, you'd have some kind of burglar come in and be like, "What's that sound?" And it turns out it's a 4.4, well, a 4.5 meter long predator standing there with his teeth bare. It's just basically a miniature T-Rex, and I think this guy would look really cool with feathers. I mean, it'd be it'd be great to have such a cool looking dinosaur like that. So yeah. um... Uh, so yeah, this is this is uh, this dinosaur, this miniature T-Rex kicks off number ten. Let's go on to number nine. Up at number nine, we have a Megalosaurian known as Proceratosaurus. Now this guy was about three to four meters long, so around half the size of a regular uh, Ceratosaurus. And as you, as the name intends, it was before Ceratosaurus. But this guy wasn't actually a Ceratosaurian. Um, I believe, yeah, he was put into the Megalosaurians because of the skull shape. And as you can tell, the crest on his head was originally thought to be a Ceratosaurian-like horn, but now he's confirmed to be a crest. And you know, this guy, he just looks so impressive. I mean, this particular picture looks so impressive with the colors and imagine that crest would definitely have some quite vibrant colors to it and um, just this guy I mean again he's a small carnivore he would make a gr he just he just he just looks so cool I mean he he's I think he's the Jurassic or I think it was the early Jurassic equivalent to raptors I mean imagine this guy living in small packs of up to I don't know six or seven that would be unstoppable to any that would be unstoppable because you've got several of these carnivores running around and uh, attacking prey taking down prey it'd just be like hunt, uh, African hunting dogs so yeah this is why Proceratosaurus gets into number nine up at number eight is Skeletosaurus the definite uh, stegosaurian of England I mean this guy he's such a cool I think I believe he grew up to about five to I think four to five meters long so he was a good sized stegosaurian and uh, the armor plate on this guy was incredible I mean look at him he's basically just the prehistoric equivalent to a hedgehog I mean look at him he's got spikes running down his neck running down his back running down his arms running down his tail it's great it looks he looks like a cool little armor plated uh, creature and the neck is elongated and the skull is beaked, so that shows that he's definitely a stegosaurian. Uh, again, the hindquarters are a lot larger than the, f than the front legs, because, it, um, because stegosaurians have the typical short legs being... Um, well, front legs being shorter than the than the back legs. So yeah, and that tail looks very flexible, so he would have been swinging that... That uh, batter, that battering, uh, well, that bar, uh, blah, 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 I can't speak now. <laughs> that baseball bat like tail about and killing all carnivores who attacked him and maybe even have a go in its own species during the mating season. So, yeah, uh, this is why Skeletosaurus is up at number eight. 
Next on the list is Cetosaurus, and Cetosaurus, well, um, <coughs> is a defining sauropod in Britain. I mean, look at it. Look at this particular picture. It's it's such a cool-looking sauropod. Um, I believe this one... <coughs> I believe uh, there were several species discovered, and because Britain, I think, was split into several different island, islands at that time, there would have definitely been different uh, species, biodiversity, in a, gen in a genus and different genera, and um, that's why in the early days of paleontology, they speculated that there would have been many species of carnivores of the genus, like, um, I think there's even still debate of bar baryonyx. Uh, even having a second species, if possible, or be becoming uh, part of the Suchomimid, um, well, the Suchomimus genus. But yeah, um, Cetosaurus is a very weird looking dinosaur, in my opinion, because it has a Brachiosaurus like front, but then a Patasaurus like back. I mean, you've got a long tail, short leg, short back legs, but long enough that they're almost as long as the front legs. The front legs are very brachiosaurian with long arms and then a head that is almost like vertical. But um, as we now know, brachiosaurus might, brachiosaurids might have not had a vertical neck. But uh, yeah, Cetosaurus is is a very cool looking sauropod. One of my favorite sauropods, in fact. So yeah, this is why it's on this, uh, well, this is why it's this high on the list. Up next is a dinosaur that will be featured in the uh, Jurassic World film, Metriocanthosaurus. Now, this dinosaur, I believe, would have got to about eight meters long. Uh, lived around, lived around the same time as other carnivores like uh, Megalosaurus and all those other guys. Um, this guy, ooh, well, he's a very cool-looking megalosaurid because, I mean, I think this particular picture, I don't know if it's a megal, I don't know if it's a Metriocanthosaurus, but a Metriocanthosaurus is a cool dinosaur. I mean, the skull on it, it's very megalosaurian, but it has those crests that make it look quite cool. Um, it's, it's definitely, an, it's definitely a perfect, one of the most perfect uh, predators you could ever get. It's good sized, it's quite fast, quite, uh, could be quite dangerous in a pack. So yeah, but, um, I hope I hope Jurassic World definitely personifies this dinosaur because we've got two British dinosaurs in Jurassic Park. We've got Baryonyx and Metriocanthosaurus, and I definitely want those two to shine because I'm pr I'm a proud Brit and all. <laughs> so yeah, God save the Queen, Metriosaurus, Metriocanthosaurus save the Queen. <laughs> Next on the list is Me is uh, not Metriocanthosaurus. We just had that is Eustreptospondylus, and in this particular picture you can see it's feasting on Ichthyosaurid, but. Eustreptospondylus was a five to six meter long carnivore, um, definitely one of the top predators in uh, Britain uh, because of its because it it definitely looks like it could have hunted in packs and it definitely would have been a force to be reckoned with. I mean, it's a mid-sized carnivore. Not not many other carnivores would have been able to stand up to it, um, but it was it seemed to be much of a scavenger. So yeah, if I mean it may have been more of a scavenger than the hunter. I mean, scavenging off the food of other larger predators, which would make sense. I mean. But uh, you, you strap a spondylus is up there because it's one of the more, I believe, one of the more famous British dinosaurs, especially with walking with dinosaurs. I think that particular you strap a spondylus was definitely, was de definitely gave it a, a good, a good name and a good, uh, good uh, recognition. And I believe that that, uh, that particular documentary highlighted um, how how a you strap a spondylus can definitely survive in different areas of a lo of life. So yeah, you strap a spondylus is on this part of the, is on this where uh, is. Uh, I can't speak today. <laughs> I apologise. But, um, yep, you strapped us on the list. This is why it's so high on the list because it's an awesome dinosaur. Up next on the list is Neo Venator, the new hunter. And this guy uh, was discovered by a dog. And that's quite cool because, well, that's quite ironic because I've got a dog's butt in my face right now. Get get down. <laughs> but yeah, but I've got a dog sitting near me. I think you just heard that. I've got a dog sitting near me as I'm recording this. But uh, yeah, Neovenator was, a, I think, to be a seven meter long carnivore. Um, it was discovered through a dog actually finding a fossilized um, iguanodon vertebrae that had been twisted a bit. And it turned out the teeth with the teeth marks were from a completely new genus of dinosaur. And Neovenator was named. Uh, Neovenator is quite a cool, speedy kind of carnivore. So yeah, this is why it's so high on the list. And let's get on to the next one. On to the next, uh, well, on to number three, which is Baryonyx Walkery. And this dinosaur is one of my absolute favourites. I mean, not only is it um, a Spinosaurid, which I think are really cool uh, theropods, but it's a, um, it's also a, um, 
a fisherman. So this guy was fishing out carp and trout before us, us British fishermen were fishing out fish from the uh, yeah canals and boats and well not boats <laughs> from the lakes and rivers of uh, Britain. And this is quite cool. This is why uh, and Baronex was about nine meters long, probably about ten meters long at maximum. So it was quite a big theropod. It was probably the biggest theropod um, in Britain at the time. And uh, yeah, it's quite a cool fisherman. I love. I love this creature. I love this creature. It's one of the reasons why dinosaur, why British dinosaurs are so cool, so cool. So yeah, on to number two. At number two is the iguana itself, iguana don. Now this dinosaur was an estimated ten meters long, so just as big as an adult uh, baryonyx. Uh, probably weighed about three tons in in weight, and uh, was one of the I think the first dino, uh, first herbivorous dinosaur to ever be discovered. And at first it was thought to be a massive iguana from the shape of its tooth because its teeth represent uh, were very very similar to that of a um, iguana. So this could be an evidence of con convergence evolution. So uh, yeah, this, this dinosaur could have evolved teeth ex very very similar to an iguana's teeth. But uh, that's where it gets its name. Iguana don means iguana tooth. So yeah. And uh, not only is it, is it an awesome dinosaur, but it's one of the first, making a great symbol for dinosaur and paleontology alike. So yeah, on to the final dinosaur, and at number one it is Megalosaurus bucklandi. Now this was the first carnivorous dinosaur ever to be discovered. At 9 meters long, and probably at least a ton to two tons in weight, it was probably the most dominant carnivore there was in Britain at the time of the Jurassic period. I mean, this guy was unchallenged, and uh, I think the only thing that could ever really challenge this guy would either be a, a full-grown Baryonyx, or possibly a Metricanthosaurus, or maybe another Megalosaurus. So yeah, this guy, he didn't have as much competition as you'd expect, but this guy is number one because his name is his name has a bit of Great Britain in it, Gr the Great Lizard. So yeah, and not only is he one of is the the first carnivorous dinosaur ever discovered, but he's probably one of the most important because he sets the standards for what we for what we know for what we know about carnivorous dinosaurs. They, they were large, two-legged, uh, forelimbs were relatively small, had great big tails, great weight to them, and were the most dominant predators. Uh, at, at their time because they they were the most dominant predators at that time and possibly the most dominant predators that ever lived theropods uh, should all take well all take a leaf out of the book of megalosaurus megalosaurus was probably one, one of the um, biggest it was probably one of the most dominant predators ever and probably one of the most least known because as of as of now we've only discovered a few fragments of skull leg bone hip, hip bone tailbone and claws and maybe and even a few footprints so this is how this, that shows how this how elusive this creature is but wherever it was and whenever it was it was very dominant so yeah thank you for uh, listening hope you've enjoyed this particular dinosaur discussion and hope you've got some great knowledge out of it so bye bye